Hi friends. Thank you for coming to have a little godly play story today. But what's this? It's something different. It's heavy. This is how you open it. These little toggles, you have to squeeze them. The desert. It's not the whole desert, of course. It's just a piece of the desert. But so many important things happened to the people of God in the desert that we knew we needed to have a piece of the desert in our godly play classrooms. And now that we're meeting online and in our homes, we knew that you needed to have a piece of the desert in your homes too. So this week we're gonna send these home with you. They're a special loan from the church godly play classroom. And when you grow up and you're not a child anymore, you'll give them to some other children. The desert is a dangerous place. It can be very hot during the day when the sun shines down and very cold at night when the winds blow. And when the winds blow, they change the shape of the desert and people get lost. And when you get lost in the desert, you might not be able to find food or water and people can die. The desert is a dangerous place. Don't go there unless you really have to. After the flood covered all the land and the waters receded and the people and the animals went out to the four corners of the earth, they began to fill the earth up. Many people lived along the rivers, especially these great rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. This is a city right there between the two rivers. Later it would be called Babylon, but right now it was called Ur. Now most of the people who lived in the city called Ur believed that there were many different gods. A god for the rock, a god for the tree, a god for the water, and a god for the sky. But there were two people who lived there named Abram and Sari, who believed that there was one God and that all of God was everywhere. They didn't know this yet, but it is what they believed. Abram and Sari came to a point where they decided to move to a new land. And they took their sheep and goats and cattle and some helpers came with them and they traveled, traveled down along the river until they came to a place where they found a city, a small city called Haran. They lived there for some time in Haran. But one day, Abram went out into the desert near Haran. And there in the desert, 
Abram came so close to God, and God came so close to Abram, that Abram knew what God wanted him to do. Leave this place and go to another place where God would show him. God said to Abram that day, look at the stars of the sky. Abram looked up at the night sky and all the stars and God said, I'm going to make you into a great family. There will be as many people in your family as there are stars in the sky. This sounded impossible. Abram and Sarah, Sari, were a family by themselves. They did not have any children. But Abram decided to trust God and set out to a new land. And God told Abram and Sari, as they left, to change their names. Abram would now be called Abraham, and Sari would now be known as Sarah. With their new names, they set off to a new place. They traveled, and as they traveled, they did not have a river to guide them. They went across the desert. They came to a place called Shechem. And they prayed, and God was there. So they set a rock up to remind them that God was there. They kept traveling, and they came to a place called Bethel. And there they prayed again, and God was there too. Here they built an altar to remember God. They were coming to realize that God was not just here or there, that all of God was everywhere. They made their home near the Oaks of Mamre. One day, three strangers came through the desert and stopped at the tent of Abraham and Sarah. And Sarah invited them in and gave them bread and meat and milk to drink. Then the strangers told Abraham and Sarah that they would have a child. And Sarah laughed. She was very, very old and she had never had any children. How could this be? But the strangers said it would be so. And the three strangers left. And in fact, it happened. Sarah became pregnant and had a son. And they laughed again. They named their child Isaac. Because in their language, Isaac means laugh. Sarah was very old and weary, and she died and she was buried by the oaks at Mamre. Abraham was very old too. He was lonely and sad. He missed Sarah, but he knew there was one more important thing that he had to do. He had to find a partner for Isaac. So he sent a helper back along the way they had come to where their people had been before. And there the helper met Rebecca. She was at a well getting water and she offered to help him water his camels. She was not only kind, she was also very courageous. Because when he asked her if she would move across the desert and become part of a new family, she said yes. So Rebecca traveled 
Isaac came out to meet her. He was so glad to meet her. And later they were married. Abraham by this time was very old. He died too and was buried with Sarah by the oaks at Mamre. And Isaac and Rebekah had children and their children had children and their children had children and on and on and on until your grandparents had your parents and your parents had you. And now we all are part of a great family. And there are as many people in this family as stars in the sky. Now, I wonder, I wonder what part of this story was your favorite? If you're watching with a family member, you might want to mute and talk about it for a little bit. What part was your favorite? If you're watching with a family member, you might want to pause, is what I meant to say. Pause for a little bit and talk about it. I also wonder what part of this story seemed the most important? And I wonder if there's any part of this story that was especially for you or especially about you today. I wonder if you or anyone you know has ever changed their name. I wonder if there's any part of this story we could leave out and still have all the story we need. Thank you for coming to Godly Play. I'm gonna start putting things away. I'll show you how we put this away. Put Rebecca and Isaac. This is Bethel and Shechem. And the great rivers, of course. Now, you need to know how to do this because you'll be taking care of a desert in your own home. Carefully lift the strings and push the toggles down. And then pull on the strings until the whole thing closes and then put the toggles down. It's important that we take good care of it. I know you will do that. And your family will let you know what the rules might be in your house, whether you have to do it on a table or on the floor or outside, or if you have to sweep up a little sand. Oh, I need to sweep up a little bit of sand, but I know you will take good care of it. And I'm glad that you can 